Hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be going over our official spring 2021 forecast. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe. If you do like a lot of the related content, also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. And then also our very awesome channel membership, which you can click that button next to the subscribe button and check out today. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this spring of 2021 is going to go? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, for taking a look at that precipitation forecast to begin things out. Afterwards, we're getting into the temperature forecast, severe weather forecast, and even the overall forecast, but all of those things are coming up. Here's our slightly above average precipitation region. And this is a lot of what we saw uh, in our forecast for the winter forecast, it looks very similar to that because we're kind of stuck in the same teleconnections. Uh, we see a similar Enzo. We see that La Nina. That encourages that precipitation to come into the northwest, enter into the plains, and then as you can see, exit out through the Ohio Valley as well. You might also notice that a lot of that expands into our severe weather alley there for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and surrounding states. So that is going to lead to above average severe weather. That's a little bit of a sneak peek, but we'll talk more about that later on. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and talk about the moderately above average precipitation regions and then our below average precipitation regions in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that moderately above average precipitation region. And as you can see, for Oklahoma up through Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and then in through the Ohio Valley and portions of the upper Midwest as well, we're going to be dealing with moderately above average precipitation. I think a lot of those storm tracks are going to ride along that jet stream, which as you'll see in a minute on our temperature forecast is going to kind of curve around the southeastern United States and miss the east coast uh, and kind of head straight north up into Canada. That's going to lead to a lot of those storms taking a similar track to that. A lot of the precipitation will be on the very uh, western end of those and a lot of that severe weather as well. All right. Now, let's go ahead and add that second above average precipitation region, and this is for Oregon and Washington, where we expect a lot of those storms to move onshore here uh, and just lead to some above average precipitation, even more so for this region uh, than those other surrounding regions. Now, as far as below average precipitation, we're not super confident in this because we only have one shade, which indicates a lower confidence type call here. Uh, this could swing a little bit closer to average, but we do expect overall there to be some pretty scattered in below average precipitation or solid below average precipitation for this region. Uh, for California, Nevada, the four corner states, and then in through Texas, we expect just less storms to come through. And that's very typical in a La Nina. Usually El Nino's is when we see most of that southwest precipitation. And then in the La Nina, it's just not really there. Anyway, now what we're going to do here is move on and take a look at that temperature forecast in just a moment. Now, starting out with our above average temperature region, as you can see, most of the southern United States here is going to be in that above average temperature region. Uh, and most people get this confused, or at least a lot of people, they'll say, isn't the south usually warmer? Uh, but this is compared to normal. So let's say your average temperature in Dallas is, I'm just going to throw something out there, your average high temperature is 80. Well, in this situation, you would likely be on average throughout the course of these three months, March through April through May, which is meteorological spring, you might be at like 83 or 84 instead of 80 on average. That would be above your average for that three month period. Uh, so we're expecting similar uh, impacts here for all of this southern region here in this orange shade, uh, those slightly above average temperatures. Now in this orange shade, the second orange shade, this is where we expect moderately above average temperatures to take place. The four corner states in through Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, down through the deep south, down through the southeast, and even up in through portions of the Appalachian Mountains and the Mid-Atlantic as well. This is where we expect uh, that southeast ridge to still come in from time to time during the spring months. And I expect with the warm Gulf waters heading up, we just will be dealing with some warmer than normal conditions down here. Uh, for sure at this point. It's also pretty typical in a La Nina as well. So there's multiple factors leading me to believe this will be the case. Here is that below average temperature region. And as you can see for the Northwest and through the Rockies, the Northern Plains there, the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and even portions of the extreme Northeast there, uh, we're expecting slightly below average temperatures to take place throughout all these regions. It's very similar to how this winter has gone and how our winter forecast was predicting things to go. Again, 
uh, those conditions are just because of the fact that the La Nina is still around. We're seeing still similar conditions. We even have a moderately below average temperature region here, and that's for the Pacific Northwest and through the Northern Rockies there, and then portions of the Northern Plains for the Dakotas. That's just where we expect even colder conditions to take place compared to those other blue regions. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at that severe weather forecast, our final severe weather forecast for the spring of 2021. And then we're going to get into that overall forecast. And then at the very end, we're going to take a blast from the past look at all of our storms that we took a look at in 2020 during our live stream, some of our best supercells that we saw. We're going to be taking a look at some of those in just a moment. Now, here's that updated severe weather forecast. Like I said, uh, if you're anywhere in the yellows, I expect generally you to be near normal or maybe slightly above normal as far as how many severe weather events and also how many tornadoes you see. But that red region, according to my forecast, my precipitation and temperature forecast, is where there will be the most favorable conditions for severe weather events to take place compared to normal even. So obviously Oklahoma and Kansas typically see very good conditions for severe weather, but I expect even more of that than what is typical during a, sp a spring season. Uh, and really with the La Nina, we've talked about this in a few previous videos, with that La Nina in place, we expect generally more severe weather than what is typical throughout the spring months. And we do have that La Nina in place, which leads me to be very confident that we will be dealing with some above average severe weather and above average tornadoes likely this this season. Now, I also wanted to mention that throughout our monthly forecasts for, let's say, I'm, I'm going to go with March, April, May, probably even June, July, and possibly August for each of those monthly forecasts. And those for those of you that are not subscribed, we do make monthly forecasts similar to this every single month for that given month, obviously. So we're about to make our March outlook that we're going to be making in just about a week that you can check out then. Uh, but we're going to be doing individual severe weather forecasts as well for each month that you'll be able to access. Obviously, if you subscribe to our channel, uh, we'll be doing that once a month for more of a pinpoint accurate forecast for that individual month. But this is overall for March, April and May here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that exciting overall forecast. And then also that blast from the past. We're going to take a look at our top storms from 2020 that we took a look at on our live streams. I'm very excited to present that as well. All right, now here's that exciting overall forecast, and we're going to work our way from the northwest to the southeast, basically, and we do that every single time. I don't know why, but cool and wet for the Pacific Northwest, and this is a lot of what we saw, actually. I think this actually is literally what we said for the winter forecast, or maybe it was one of the monthly forecasts recently, but I just expect that pattern to really persist, and the typical snow as well for the Rockies, they do see kind of like a fall snowy season and then a spring snowy season there and I expect that to be the case dry and warmer typically just for the southwest in general you saw that on the temperature and precipitation forecast as we work our way uh, to the northeast of those regions we see frigid for that dark blue region that's where I expect the coldest of the conditions to persist uh, colder than normal there for that lighter blue region there to the south of that severe weather outbreaks I expect to be likely within the pink region uh well duh but uh, really, I expect above average severe weather outbreaks for this pink region and even possibly some above average severe weather for that surrounding darker red region. Now, for the southeast and south central United States, even up through the mid-Atlantic, I expect warmer than normal conditions. You saw that on our temperature forecast, like I said. And then up for the northeast, last but not least, we see a late start to spring is what I'm expecting. I do expect kind of some rainy and, you know, just maybe even snowy for some of the more mountainous and northern regions there, especially in March. Uh, and just cold overall to start things out. And it's going to take a while for spring to take place. Uh, but we do expect some warmer times for April and May, obviously. So the spring will make it eventually, but I do expect a late start there. Now let's get into that kind of blast from the past, some photos of some of those supercells that we were tracking last year. I'm excited to make some live streams this year as well. I can't wait to do that with you guys. We do that for some of the bigger severe weather events, and that's going to be a lot of fun to track those storms with you guys. Obviously, they're very dangerous, so it's going to be, you know, obviously you hate to see it, but it's a lot of fun talking with you guys uh, and watching storms grow. As a weather geek, I love seeing that, obviously. Um, just watching radar and stuff. But here was one. Uh, and this one, I don't have the date on screen, but this was one of the earlier ones I'm pretty sure we took a look at. And that's Leesville. And this was in 
Louisiana, Leesville, Louisiana. Uh, and this one was an embedded supercell, and that's really cool because it's not like an individual storm. It's embedded in a line, and you can see that hook echo was located just to the north of Leesville. Uh, but from what I remember, there was no tornado that was confirmed with this one. So that's extra cool when you don't actually see a tornado because nobody had to get hurt. Uh, this one was in West Columbia, Texas, and this one did have a confirmed tornado actually there for West Columbia, Texas. They're just uh, to the north of that town there. Uh, this one was an individual supercell, so this one was not embedded. This one was individual, uh, and you can clearly see that hook echo there just near West Columbia. This was a really cool storm, and this one was actually on March 2nd. So this one was another one that was very early on, and this one was in kind of western Kentucky there. We watched it cross over into western Kentucky actually. Uh, in Sierra or Cairo or whatever that's called, that small town there on the very, very western edge of Kentucky, uh, we see that hook echo just to the east of that region. This one had a beautiful structure, and I was actually very surprised that this one never had a tornado. And if I remember correctly, uh, it was this night that uh, Nashville got hit with their tornado, which was very, very unfortunate. But I believe that was March 3rd, very early on March 3rd. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Now, this one was on March 28th, so we're getting a little bit closer to the heart of the tornado season by this point. And as you can see, just to the south of Steubenville, Ohio here, so this one was in Ohio, um, you can tell that we definitely had a good hook echo structure there. Uh, and I believe, yeah, this one was about to cross over into Pennsylvania, and this one led to a very, very big storm for uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, if I remember correctly. But this one did not drop a tornado either. Now, last but certainly not least, last year on January 11th, I believe this was one of our bigger live streams that we did. And for the Gulf states, we had a bit of a tornado event. And this one was a scary situation. And I believe it never dropped a tornado, which is really good news. Uh, but this one was heading straight for Tuscaloosa. That was definitely probably the closest call uh, to a really bad situation on one of my live streams last year. Uh, none of my live streams, what any of the storms we were taking a look at, led to any serious tornadoes, uh, which is obviously good news. Um, but this one was probably the closest call. You can tell it really has a good structure with the V structure there. And then just to the southwest of Tuscaloosa, we have a really strong hook echo there. But again, this one never led to a tornado, even though I remember this one having very strong rotation as well. Anyway, I think that was really cool. I wanted to share that because I was taking screenshots throughout the year. Uh, if you guys remember, I actually did that during the live stream oftentimes, and I would mention to you guys that I was going to do something with it. Well, this was it. I just wanted to take a little bit of a look back into the past and kind of review some of the worst looking storms that we saw last year. I'm going to do the same thing this year. So probably next year's official spring forecast, uh, we will have more to come. So stay tuned for that. That's a long way down the road, of course. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at about a four out of six. I feel very confident in this seasonal forecast. Uh, usually spring is one of the easier ones. Uh, same story with fall. Those transition months are a little bit easier to pin down uh, than the winter and summer months. Uh, four out of six is very confident for a seasonal forecast. You're never going to really see a five or six confidence on a seasonal forecast. Uh, it's just too long of a forecast to be like, you know, 100% confident in something. Uh, but we feel really good about this one here. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys when our next snowstorm is going to be, and Thomas Folks said, next snowstorm is on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, and that's pretty far out, but I like the boldness. You guys know I like bold calls from the comments of the day, so we're going to mark our calendars and see if that comes true. That'd be very interesting to see that happen. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Sebastian Tao, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Belemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Gary's, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I'll see you guys in the next video.